ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى اله الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى صحبه الغر الميامين وعلى التابعين ومن تبعهم باحسان واخلاص الى يوم الدين يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون اما بعد فان خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله ثم اما بعد عباد الله اعلموا اننا معشر المسلمين امه واحده امه واحده وجسد واحد واما ما سمانا الله سبحانه وتعالى بنفسه المسلمين هو سماكم المسلمين سبحانه وتعالى ولم يسمنا باي اسم اخر No, my dear brothers and sisters, that we Muslims are one nation and one body, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called us Muslims, and He did not give us any other label other than Muslims, and that we are brothers and sisters in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that we are the allies of one another. وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضُ So it is incumbent then upon each and every one of us that we take the means or the causes or the ways that make each one of us love the other. We should take the means to enforce fraternity. We should take the means to strengthen the brotherhood and the sisterhood amongst us. We should, we should take the means uh, that make us merciful to one another, that make us treat one another with softness and leniency and gentleness. And if we do so, then we have achieved fraternity and we have achieved unity and we have achieved strength and we have achieved cooperation with one another on righteousness and graciousness as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be. He commanded us in his glorious book when he said, ولا تفرقوا and he said at the end of the ayah وَأُولَاءِكَ هُمْ الْمُفْلِحُونَ he said strong, hold strongly and firmly to the hope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not divide and he praised those who do so at the end of the verse by saying وَأُولَاءِكَ هُمْ الْمُفْلِحُونَ those indeed are the successful and he warned us against distinction and division and against uh, argumentation and against treating one another harshly. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Don't be like those who divide and differ with one another after the clear signs had come to them. And he clarified to us that those who do so will face a great torment, a severe punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he also said, may he be exalted. وَأَقِيَهُ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا فَتَفْشَلُوا وَتَذْهَبَ رِيْحُكُمْ مُصْبِرُوا 
in Allah and our Sahih. He said, Obey Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and do not fight one another. Do not dispute with one another. Do not engage in argumentation with one another, lest you fail. Lest you fail and your strength fades away. Possible and persevere. Persevere in doing that. Persevere to keep the unity. Persevere to keep the harmony. Persevere to keep the peace amongst you. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with those who persevere, with those who are patient. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in many hadiths, he emphasized the unity of believers, the fraternity amongst believers, the mercy amongst believers. He said, Al-Mu'minu lil-mu'mini kalbunyan al-marsus yashuddu ba'ruhu ba'ra. He said that the believer to another is like the bricks of a building. They strengthen one another and he interlaced his fingers like this. So this is how believers and Muslims should be to one another, strengthening one another, supporting one another, helping one another out, be there for one another at times of prosperity or at times of diversity. And Rasulullah also gave a parable. He said, مثل المؤمنين في توادهم وتراحمهم وطعاقهم كمثل الجسد إذا اشتكى منه رب تذاع له سائر الكسد السهل والحمى. He said the parable of believers, of believers in their compassion to one another, in their being merciful to one another, in their being kind to one another is like the one body. When one organ of the body ails, then all of the other organs come to the rescue, come to the rescue and take care of that organ until it heals. This is how Rasulullah described his ummah. This is how he described Muslims. To be there for one another, to love one another and to care for one another. And ayyuhal ahibba, it is natural. من الطبيعة أن يحدث الاختلاف في الرأي أن أن تختلف وجهات النظر بين الفينة والأخرى بين المسلمين وهذا شيء طبيعي ولكن كما يقولون الاختلاف في الرأي لا يفسد للود قضية الاختلاف ليس شيئا منقوطا ولكن الفرقة والعداوة والبغضاء و التنابز بالألقاب والكره هذه الأشياء هي المنقولة. My dear brothers and sisters, it is natural to have differences of opinion, to be uh, to be having different viewpoints. Each one has his own viewpoint. This is natural, but let's not, you know, uh, let that be a source of enmity. Let's not have, let that be a source of hatred to one another. Let's uh, not have that as a source of fighting one another or belittling one another or backbiting one another because these are characteristics that we should keep away from us, that we should shun and we should not let these characteristics be of our own because this, these are not the characteristics of Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Muhammad Rasulullah, Wallatina ma'a, Ashidda ma'ar al Kufa, Wahama Ubaynahum. You know, the, the characteristic that should prevail and be widespread amongst Muslims is mercy is to be merciful to one another, to overlook the mistakes of one another.
subhanAllah, to advise one another to that which is good, and to advise one another against that which is evil. الأمر بالمعروف والنهي عن المنكر. لا بد أن نحب أن نحب بعضنا البعض. لا بد أن يهتم بعضنا ببعض. لا بد أن نوقر كبيرنا ونعطف على صغيرنا. رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ليس منا من لم يوقر كبيرنا ويرحم صغيرنا. He or she is not from us, do, do not belong to, they do not belong to us, those who do not honor our elderly and be merciful and compassionate to our youngsters. So this is how we should be as Muslims. We should hear the advice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the advice of His beloved Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as I said, Argumentation, arguments happen, differences of opinion happen, different viewpoints we can have. We are entitled to that. But let not these viewpoints be contrary to the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the instructions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let's not our viewpoints be contrary to the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned us do not divert from his commands, from the messenger's commands. Do not divert from the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he says, وَاَقْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِعًا And you divide yourselves, and you fight one another, and you call you one another names, and you raise your voices against one another. This is not the proper behavior of a Muslim. We should embrace the beautiful traits that Islam taught us. We should realize how beautiful our deen is. We should live our deen. We should live our Qur'an. See also Rasulullah was, was, was a Qur'an walking on earth. كَانَ خُلُقُهُ Qur'an. Rasulullah his morals and his values and his etiquettes were an implementation of the Qur'an. He was a Qur'an walking on earth. And he is the best example for us. So why don't we follow in the steps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He was merciful to the children, merciful to the widows, merciful to the orphans, merciful to the sick. He called to that which is good and always advised against that which is evil. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we should take him as the best example. When disputation and argumentation happen, whether between two brothers or two sisters, or whether between two groups of brothers and, and your sisters, or whether it be between many factions and sects within one country or within countries, or whether it be between two Muslim countries or many Muslim countries, there is a solution to that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set or paved the way for that. He, he instructed us this is in Surah Al-Hashr, I believe. وَإِنْ طَائِفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَخْيَتَهُوا فَأَصْدِقُوا بَيْنَهُمَا فَإِنْ بَغَتْ إِحْدَاهُمَا عَلَى الْأُخْرَى فَقَاتِلُوا الَّذِي تَبَغِي حَتَّى كَفِيلَ إِلَى أَمْرِ اللَّهِ فَإِنْ فَاعَتْ فَأَصْدِقُوا بَيْنَهُمَا بِالْعَدِلِ وَأَقْصِقُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُقْصِقِينَ then hasten to make peace between them. Don't, you know, uh, let that uh, fight for uh, uh, prolongs more than necessary. Hasten to make peace, you know, to, to calm things down right away, to make peace between the, the fighting uh, brothers and sisters or factions or whatever. Hasten to make peace. But if one transgressed upon the other, and did not heed the advice and the instructions of the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of Rasulullah because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed us فَإِنْ تَنَازَحْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَأُدُّوهُ 
إلى الله والرسول. If you disputed amongst yourselves about something, then refer that to the book of Allah and the Sunnah of Rasulullah. So that's all. You will find a solution there. You will find a solution in the book of Allah and the Sunnah of Rasulullah to end this disputation, to end this argumentation, to end this, uh, uh, you know, uh, talking forth and back to each other. To end this hatred, to end, to end the, the enmity, we have a solution when we refer back to, to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of Rasulullah. But if a party or a person transgressed and did not heed the advice of the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of Rasulullah, despite you advising them and trying to make peace between them, then you have to be against this party who transgressed. Until it comes to terms, and when it comes to terms with the other party, then you have to make peace or reconcile, but with fair and justice. With fair and justice. Do not reconcile between parties to make one uh, gain, uh, some kind of gain at the expense of the other. You have to do that fairly. So that everybody is satisfied and everybody is happy. And then they would uh, embrace one another and ask forgiveness from one another. We have to be forgiven and pardoning, my dear brothers. Whosoever pardons and forgives, then his reward will be upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how great a reward that comes from the greatest. SubhanAllah. And you have to hold patience. In Allah and Allah's Sabirin. In the name of the Sabirin, Ajahun, the way of the Sab. The patient, the perseverant, will be rewarded without measure, without count. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest. And He rewards those who are pardoning, rewards those who are forgiving. And if you forgive, Allah forgives you in return. And Jazakum in Jin Salam. Now the reward comes according to the deed. If you forgive, Allah forgives you. If you give in the way of Allah, Allah gives you. If you are good to others, others will be good to you. And what else you seek in this dunya other than the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the pleasure of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the pleasure of your parents and the pleasure of your brothers and your sisters. This is what, if, if you have the pleasure of Allah and His Messenger, and the pleasure of your parents, and the pleasure of your brothers and sisters, what else do you need? You have gotten all the happiness that is in the world. This world is transient, my dear brothers and sisters. Nothing is worth to fight about. Nothing is worth to be uh, a source of fight and argumentation and hatred and dislike. We have to clean our hearts. This is the most important thing. We have to clean our hearts. Don't look at the appearance. The appearance is deceiving. But clean your hearts first. Clean your hearts first. Clean your hearts from envy. Clean your hearts from jealousy. Clean your hearts from self-admiration. Clean your hearts from ego. Clean your hearts from hatred. Clean your hearts. This is very important. Except those who come to Allah with pure hearts. This is what we are to achieve. You know, those who purify their souls, purify their hearts, are the ones who will be successful. As I said, Nothing is worth to be fighting about in this dunya. This whole dunya, you know, the value of this dunya is nothing in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So shun this dunya, shun your ego, and be merciful to one another. Rasulullah sallallahu instructed us to plant the seeds of love, the seeds of mercy in our hearts and to treat one another with kindness 
and with pardoning and forgiveness and with gentleness Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in his farewell speech he told us about the unity of Muslims when he said لا ترجعوا بعض كفارا يضربوا بعضكم رقاب بعض He said do not revert to this belief do not be disbelievers after me striking the necks of one another and unfortunately this is what's happening in the Muslim world they are killing each other right? brothers are killing each other